In this little tutorial, we are looking at darts, how to mark them, pin them, sew them, and get them just perfect every time. So when your darts are marked up on your pattern, more often than not, they are just drawn with straight lines. And the last thing you actually want to do is sew them as a straight line. A lot of people, especially when they're first starting off with dressmaking, will literally follow the straight line and they will then end up with a point to the dart and what I call a little bit of puddling around the end of the dart so it doesn't look as smooth or as curved as it could be. The trick with sewing darts is not to sew them just in a straight line, it's to sew them with a slight arc to your curve. So you're moving from the outside of the dart and almost trying to come parallel with the folded dart before you finish sewing and before you come off at the end. So here we have my pattern piece, all nicely pinned on and cut out. And then here's the dart that we're going to need to sew into this pattern piece. What we want to do is mark the ends of the dart. I've cut the size 14 across the bust here. So I'm going to use the point at the end of the 14. And what I normally do is just pop a pin through. Sometimes people you can use tailor's tacks if they want to, um, but I normally just pop a pin through the end of my dart. And then what I also do is pop a pin through where those dart ends out at the side of the garment are going to sit. Once I've popped those pins through, I then remove the pins nearest to the dart, just so I can move the paper around. And you would normally do this with Taylor's chalk or something like that. But for the purposes of the video, I'm going to use a pen just so you can really clearly see where I'm marking. So what I would normally do is having placed these pins in, I can pull up the tissue paper and exactly where the pins are going through the end of the dart, I'm going to make a little mark with my chalk or pen as it is today, just so you can all see. I can then take those pins out and I know I have the mark there. And if you have another layer, so if you've cut something on folded fabric and you've got another dart on the other side, you can also lift this one and make the same marks on the next layer down as well with the pins going through all of the layers. Having got those two marks there, I can then pull my pattern even further back and there's the end of my dart, the point of my dart which I'll make a small mark there as well. Now, if you need to, having left some of the pins in the pattern, you can pop it back down onto it. If you don't need the pattern on your piece anymore, then you can take it off fully at this point and just make sure that your darts are marked nicely. So there's the two ends of the dart out at the edge of the garment and there's the dart end at the bust point as well. So I've got that all nicely marked up. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to pinch the dart together and I'm going to bring the two marks together by placing a pin through one and then matching it over on the other side and placing a pin through the other. And now when you squeeze those two marks together along the pin, you can get them to perfectly match. Once you've done that, I can turn the pin and just give it a little hold so it's now heading towards the end of the dart. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to pinch where I've marked the end of the dart and just smooth a nice line between there and the original marks out at the edge of the garment. I can then, if it's a fabric that won't worry too much about pinning. I can then pop a pin through the end of the dart so I've got a nice marker as to where to stop sewing. 
If you have a garment, um, a fabric you're using that won't take a pin through the point of the dart because you don't want to damage anything, just give it a really good crease with your fingers and leave it for now and then position it up when you're taking it underneath the sewing machine. As I mentioned earlier, the curve of the dart needs to not just travel in a dead straight line from one to the other. The last thing you want is a point at the end here. So what you actually want to do is sew your dart in almost a straight line to about three quarters of the way along the dart and then come parallel with the folded fabric right until you reach the point where the end of the dart should be and that's where you can come off with the sewing machine. Don't do a reverse because you may well end up puckering the fabric. Just come straight off the edge of the fabric and then gently tie the threads in a knot at the other end. If it helps to mark up your dart and the direction you're going to be sewing, you can mark a nice straight line and I'm just going to move that pin so I can do it. You can mark a nice straight line towards the edge of the fabric, coming very close, about three quarters of way along the dart, and then the line curves and comes along the folded fabric for a little way so that it has a nice flat end once it's sewn and pressed. So having marked your fabric, and again, I've done this in pen so that you can see the line, but actually you'd do this in chalk or one of those air erase pens um, if you wanted to. You've then got a line to follow as you begin to stitch your dart. So I've got the curved line that I drew over on the other side there. I'm actually going to sew it with the other side facing up towards me just so you can see the curve as it goes in. I'm going to start the dart with just a little reverse and I'm in line with that mark that I made initially. I'm heading in a straight line aiming to get to the edge of the fabric about three quarters of the way up the dart and I'm now going to turn and come parallel with the edge of the fabric. I'm going to take that pin out of the way, that's the end of my dart, and I'm going to keep on stitching all the way to the very end there. Now without reversing, I'm now just going to turn the fabric and just come straight off the edge. And what we've got there is a slightly curved line coming up to the end of the dart giving you a nice gradual transition back into the flat fabric. Now when I press that, that's going to be a, a lot better than just having sewn in a straight line from dart to tip. Darts need to be treated quite carefully and once they're sewn, they also need to be pressed quite carefully. So what you're going to want to do is once your dart is sewn into place, you're going to want to press it on a curve as well. Now you can use a tailor's ham, which is just a very, very stuffed ironing aid um, that you can use to press curves in. But if you haven't got that, you can always wrap a potato in a couple of layers of tea towels and it will work just as well. So you don't need a whole load of fancy accoutrements um, to make sure that you can press your darts nicely. So whichever you're using, whether it's a tailor's ham or whether it's a wrapped up potato, um, then you can place your dart over the curve. So here's my dart, nicely sewn. I've got the edge of the dart here that needs to be pressed downwards towards the bottom of the garment. So if this is the armhole here and the hemline is down in that direction, my dart wants to be pressed down towards the hemline, this bust dart. I'm going to start by just pushing the end of the dart, so the kind of about halfway up the dart, I'm going to push that down as we want it to be pressed and then underneath the tip of the dart and this is all about this nice smooth transition between the dart 
and the flat fabric that's going to go across the bust there. I'm going to pop my tailor's ham underneath this curved stuffed piece of equipment but as I said earlier you could equally just wrap a potato in a towel and use that just as easily and over the curve I'm going to then press the end of the dart out so it's got a lovely flat transition. I'm doing all of this on the wrong side of the fabric. You don't want to do this across the right side of the fabric at all um, for fear of marking the fabric with the iron. So it's best to do all of this on the wrong side. And then when you turn your dart over, having done those two key steps of sewing the dart with a curve and then making sure you press it beautifully, what we've got there is a dart that comes up into the garment and then it's got a beautiful smooth transition from the end of the dart into the fabric itself. So hopefully this little tutorial has got you some great ideas of how to get your darts absolutely perfect and get them sewn in and pressed beautifully every time.